Allow me to introduce him. Dr. Dennis was born in the small town of Mukono in the African nation of Uganda. Alam niyo po, napakaganda ng testimony niya. He has a very, he has a beautiful testimony kung uh, paano niya po nakilala ang Panginoon. He accepted Jesus Christ in 1980 and was immediately called to the ministry. In 1987, he co-founded the award-winning Limit X, a trio which would become one of Africa's most successful gospel music outfits. Actually, Limit X visited po JIL, I think in the early 19, uh, early 2000, I think, um, at JIL TUP. So this is not the first time that uh, Dr. Dennis is visiting JIL. In 2004, he co-founded the International College of Excellence in Chicago, which quickly grew to 22 extension campuses in multiple countries. In 2007, he founded Eagle Swings International and planted Sanctuary of Life Church the following year. And in 2009, he launched Eagle Swings Bible Institute in Chicago, where he still serves as academic dean and chancellor. Dr. Dennis has authored over a dozen books. Actually, napakaganda po nung isang book niya na daladala po niya. I'm not sure if it's available today. Meron po ba tayong book na? Oh, we don't have that. As a Global Peace Ambassador, he is a highly sought-after speaker who also serves on numerous boards of corporations around the world. He has been married to Ingrid, his beloved wife, and they were blessed with five children. They reside in Texas, USA. Personally, po, I have known Dr. Dennis for quite a long time as he is a frequent visitor of the Valencianos. He would visit Genesis in time that we are so busy with projects, just like now. But while we are so busy with a lot of things, the Lord sends him to our office to give us a fresh perspective from the Lord. My dear fellow servants from the Lord, let us give a God bless you welcome to another servant of the Most High, Dr. Dennis Sempewa. Okay. Come on, you look. Are you, are you in church today? Yes. Did you come to church? Yes. I'm from Africa. Africa, we make noise. This is too quiet. <laughs> First of all, we walk to church, so it takes us forever to get to church. And But one time we get there, you're tired. Now, this is too pretty. We have dirt floors, seven, eight thousand people, and we just go crazy for Jesus. See, we believe it literally that where two or three are gathered in my name, what does the Bible say? There I am in their midst. Amen. Yeah. Do you believe he's here? Yeah. Do you believe he's figuratively here or he's really here? Yeah. Come on, do you believe he's really here? Yeah. Okay, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, tell him, neighbor. Tell him, neighbor. He's here. See, that neighbor doesn't believe you. Look at the other neighbor. The neighbor is here. Amen. Jesus is here. I just uh, thank, thank God for bringing me here today and uh, just to get to serve you. Uh, Pastor Brother Ed is a, is a dear friend and, and uh, just to be here. We've heard about a lot. The world knows about what God has done here with JIL, you know, church and what you're doing. And so um, tonight I just, I just had a lot of, the, you know, we just had, a, I've been here in eight weeks, eight days and to, to I'm flying back from tomorrow. So this is the last evening and in the last day in the Philippines. Excited to be here with you tonight. Um, the Lord is here. He is the chief guest. He's Jesus. He's the chief guest. He's Jesus. Amen. And um, so um, I'm going to share a lot. And again, do you believe he's here? Come on. Do you believe he's here? Do you believe he's here? Um, I'll tell you, you know, um, like I was saying, we don't have nice, it's not nice like this, it's usually dirt floors and, and we have, you know, when the Bible says, let them praise his name with a dance, in Africa we believe that literally. And in fact, the Hebrew word for dance is not like, it is, that's what the Bible says, literally, let them praise his name with a dance. So we praise God. 
after about an hour or two, sometimes about two hours of just praising God. So then there's dirt everywhere. There's, you know, all the black faces turned brown. Because, you know, there's dust everywhere. And the glory of God comes, begins to fall. And, and miracles and wonders and signs begin to happen. Lame people start to get out of their wheelchairs. In fact, there forms a line from stage going all the way to the back after worship of people waiting to say, I was brought here blind, now I can see. I was brought here deaf, now I can hear. Nobody prayed for me. Nobody even knew I was here. All I did was, I praised God and it began to move. So, so in the midst of praising God, His power dwells. And we expect over where I'm from, the way I know Jesus, I'm going to tell my story a little bit. We believe when we come to God's house, He is really there. He is really there. And when we worship Him, He really is listening. When we praise Him, when we clap our hands. On Monday, my voice was always like, eh, How are you? How are you doing? My friends knew, don't talk to Dennis on Monday. He can't talk to you. Why? It was a church. Because in church we were like, oh, wait, wait. Because the Bible says, shout out to God with the voice of triumph. So we just like, it was loud. Sometimes you could hear a church from a quarter of a mile away. What's going on there? That's a church. They're praising God. They're shouting. Christians having fun with Jesus. So, amen, you're here? Amen. So that's why I'm, I'm telling you, I feel you're too quiet. Because you're too quiet. You're like, you're like watching me. You're checking me out. Don't check me out. I'm just like you. I just my, my, my family kept me outside a bit longer than you. That's why I'm, the sun beat me up a little bit more. That's why I'm darker. But I'm just like you. So um, I want you to just really, um, I want you to relax. And uh, the part God's going to move. God moves. You know when we are with Him, when we come and gather. How many know Jesus shows up? Amen. Come on, how many know he shows up? Amen. amen. Well, when I say amen, you say amen. 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 When I say hallelujah, you say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, make me feel a little homesick. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that's a little better. Okay. Try this, everybody. Try this. Try this. Come on. Ten times really fast, here we go. That's like Tagalog, it's like, uh, no, Africa, remember? Lao, one, two, three, go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like little dogs. That's not, I didn't say make a dog sound, I say, come on, come one more time. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're okay. <laughs> okay, I was, I was born in Africa, but say Uganda. I'm going to say Uganda. Uganda, at the time when I was a kid, um, um, uh, my earliest memory, I'm clutching my baby sister's hand and we need to go to school. But the pathway to school, there's a dead body. Because the soldiers had come through the previous night and had killed a bunch of people. So one of the neighbors was laying body in the street. And we, I remember, I, I was too young, I was really young, and she's even more little. And we couldn't, because of our little feet, little legs, oops, we could not jump over the body. So I remember, it took like forever, we're like, should we go back? To? And the, the grown-ups were like, you know, jumping over, you know, because that's, death was common when I was a kid. And so I remember telling my, my sister, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And we went to the street right there and I, because we couldn't go back, we we're gonna get in trouble if we went home. So we had to go to school. We went to school. We, 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 so we came around the body and, and I remember even I remember it like it was yesterday. And and, and we just we went around the bush to, to go to school. My earliest memory, the, the 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 army in my country at that time was not paid. So at night they would come raiding our villages raping and looting house to house. Sometimes raping as young as three years old. In fact, one time, all the girls in some of our villages were all pregnant by soldiers because of all the carnage and the war. And life is telling me that 
you will never mount to anything at all. I began to see nobody grew old in my tribe. The, the life expectancy was 37 and a half. That's how long you expected to live. So in my village, when you saw a 50-year-old man, he was really old. We were like, whoa, he's 50. Because nobody lived that long. I, I use 50 because I am now 51 years old. I, I, should, I, 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 should, I should be alive. In fact, I'm the longest living Sempebwa male in my history because they all died young. They all died of alcoholism. And if it wasn't alcoholism, it was, the, it was war, it was diseases, it was incredible. So nobody lived long. So here I am at 12 years old, 10, 11, 12, and life is telling me, you're, you're doomed. You will never grow old. You'll never amount to anything at all. There's no hope for you. I remember this one night, um, this, you know, we're getting ready to go to bed at night, and, and uh, you know, we never slept in pajamas because that was too comfortable because we would have to be ready to leave the house at the drop of a hat and that one night I remember the neighbors coming and knocking on the door you need to go get out get out of the house and we're like oh, oh, okay and we we just we got out of the house and said the soldiers are coming and tonight they are really ferocious they're mad they're killing all the males over 18 they were they were upset at something so they were going house to house I remember running out the back door with my siblings and my whole, the whole household who would run from bush to bush, we're hiding. I remember hearing my friends pleading to the soldiers, don't touch mommy, don't kill daddy, you know. I remember the voices as we run all night, all night we're running. And about 2 a.m., it felt like 2 a.m., we just stopped because we couldn't stop running. The dangers were still out because those guys were there. To, they had raided the village and they weren't leaving. So we, we, were, we kept running and hiding in different bushes that night. And around, like, very late, I remember my dad sitting us down and saying, okay, now this is it. I think we're going to die today because the kids are all tired of running and, you know, we can't do anything about it. And so, so he's, and I remember him saying, we may, this may be our last night. And I remember he, he, a, a tear dropped the tears going down his cheeks. And I was like, oh, that was more scary to me than the bomb bombs and the bullets because daddy was crying. Because daddies don't cry. Daddies are strong. If daddy's crying, it is really bad. And I remember just falling asleep somehow. Beautiful starry African sky and millions of stars it looks like and, and uh, peaceful up there but horrible down. And we fell asleep somehow and in the morning the chirping of the birds in the African morning was just beautiful. And we wake up and I'm just frantic looking for, is anybody still, are, they, are we dead, are we here, are we alive? And I count everybody's alive. And so then we began to walk back to the house. And I remember just the smell of burning corpses. It was, it was a crazy night that was just another day in Uganda. About three days later, a few days later, we were in school in the classroom and there was a bombing raid in the village, a bomb hits one of the buildings and everybody just, just gets up and runs as fast as we could. We run, run, run. About a mile into the run, we figure, I think we're safe enough and we begin to check ourselves, you know, is this my blood? You know, we're just crying, you know, it's, it's really bad. And, and my friend, my friend, his name is Fred. Fred is talking loud. And it's like, did you see that? Oh, my, that teacher, the ball, it killed, so and so is dead. So we're just thinking, Fred, stop, stop, be quiet, shut up, Fred, Fred don't talk, you know, because we're just irritated. But Fred is not stop, stopping, he's talking, and he's talking louder. His eyes are red. When we look at Fred, he has a piece of metal protruding from his belly. He, a bomb, a piece of shrapnel was stuck inside of him. And I remember, crying with Fred. Now the pain, the adrenaline wears off, pain, pain. Fred is bleeding to death and we can't call the, the ambulance because everything, anarchy, everything is shut down. There's nobody even responding. Hospitals are shut down. And I remember just thinking, that's it. If Fred's dead, I'm never gonna make it either. If Fred's dead, there's no hope for me either. 
And I remember thinking, is my life ever going to become anything at all? I, and I had to kind of get depressed. A few months later, because that was life, I could tell you story after story. My mama comes and says, Dennis, we need to go. I want you to accompany me to go to a crusade. I was like, what's that? A crew what? Crusade. Okay, whatever that is, yes, I'll go. Because we were just, I just want to get out of the house. So I remember putting on my little pair of shorts, I'm just excited, because mommy's taking me to a crusade. It was in the middle of the city of Kampala, and about 20, 30,000 people. And this was like, boy, oh, I've never seen so many people. Now, because I wanted to be close, so I'm on the front row, you know? And the preacher comes and he begins to speak. You got to speak about Jesus. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is Lord. I'm like, Jesus? Who's Jesus, you know? Because the, the white missionaries have taught us a song. Jesus loves you, this I know. For the Bible to the son. So I'm like, Jesus? That white man's Jesus? But he was talking about Jesus like he wasn't a story. And he said, Jesus is alive. I'm thinking, he is? And so it was as if the preacher was talking to me. So when I would say, he is, he would say, yes, she is. I'm like, eh. okay, he, he, he's alive, he's, he's amazing. He's, and then I'm thinking, oh, if Jesus is really alive, I wish Jesus could just give me peace. All I want is peace. And then the preacher said, you want peace? I'm like, yes. And, 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 I, and, I, said, and I said, well, how does that work, though? This is crazy. We're probably going to die tonight or something. And I said, no, the peace of God is different. I'm like, okay, okay. And it's like he's, he's like, he's hearing my mind, what I'm thinking. So I'm like, well, I, 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 how does he even do that? You know, you're wondering, how does he do that? I'm like, eh. but now, now I'm thinking, don't you read my mind, don't read my mind, don't read my mind. So then it says, then it says, and then I, I, I think to myself, I wish, I wish I could have it now. I wish I could have this piece now. And it says, you want it now? I'm like, okay. You know, and it's come. And I'm the first one. I just pull my mama, come let's go mom. So we just come all the way to the front. Hundreds of people. And I'm like, I want peace. All I wanted was peace because depression. And I was getting scared. It was getting late. Are we gonna die? The thoughts of evening were very bad thoughts. So. Is this my last day? Then I'm probably never going to see the sun again. I'm probably never going to see my mother again. I'm going to die. My mother's going to be raped. Just those are the thoughts of the evening because now the sun was beginning to set. So I want Jesus right now to give me that thing. Peace. So, so we pray. Accept Jesus in your heart. I'm like, okay, I will. I'll do that. No problem. I want peace. So I'm like, oh, Jesus, come out right now. Amen. Peace. So, he closes the prayer. I'm like, wait, I came for peace. So I'm thinking, oh man. Because I was expecting like a zap, like electricity, like psh, something. Give me peace. So we get ready to go back and they need to close the crusade. And I'm like, okay, I got Jesus, but I didn't get peace. I didn't, I didn't feel zap. I wanted something. You zap me. Just tell me. God blow me away or something, give me peace. So I'm walking home and the sun is setting. Usually again, sunset, bad news. I'm supposed to be. <laughs> but today, as we're walking home, I was like, so I'm thinking, uh oh, what happened? So I get home thinking, oh man, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I don't think I'm gonna die. I think, I think I'm I'm okay. So we get home. My sister, my baby sister is like, she's like, oh, why are you all smiling? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and she's like, well, well get, get, just get the smug of your face. You need to prepare because I was the firstborn. You need to know what we're going to do today if they come. If the soldiers come, I said, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, aren't you afraid? Again? What if tonight they're coming? I said, no. If they come, me. What's wrong with you? I didn't have a theological explanation. All I said was, Jesus. Jesus. <sighs> Jesus. She said, go to sleep. You need to sleep it off. That's crazy. Go to sleep. So 
I, I slept, but I'm thinking in the morning it's going to wear off. So I wake up in the morning, I'm, <gasps> I'm happy. I'm like, ooh. So I can't wait to tell my friends. So I, so I go to school. I'm like, that's that now my friends, I was the class captain. So they said, Dennis, come here. What's the smile on your face? I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, we, uh, do, you, don't you know these are bad days? Now in the morning, that was not happy. In the morning, every empty seat usually meant they died. Or their village was raided. Or you will never see them again. So mornings were like somber. We're like, you don't smile, you don't look around, you just do your math, you know? But this day, I'm like, Dennis, shh, shh, get the smile. I'm like, Are you? and then they said, don't you, don't, don't you know we could die? I said, I know, yeah, we could. You know, you're not afraid? I'm like, no, no, I'm not. You know, so what? I said, yeah, because if I die, I'm going to be with Jesus, you know. Yeah. And then they said, well, but then I said something. Profound. I said, I didn't know it was profound, of course. I said, but if I don't die, I want to talk, talk about this Jesus, you know, what he has done for me. And they said, ah, oh, you just, something's wrong with you. So I'm like, I know. That's amazing. So, but they're curious. So they began to ask questions. Okay. Uh, I said, just come to church. Just come to church with me. So we had church every day. We go from school. Church, home, school, church, home, school. So I said, so every day that day, that week, I was taking three or four friends to, to church because they were curious about Jesus. I'm like, do you want to be happy? I didn't know how to preach. I just said, do you want to be happy? Come, Jesus, make it. Jesus, do this. We do this to you. And they're like, huh? Huh? And now, by the end of the month, there's like a Jesus corner. We're all like. <laughs> But I remember the day that the, the friends cornered me and they sat me down and they said, Okay, we're done with this. I want you to tell us, tell us about Jesus. I'm like, oh. I was so happy to tell them. But I realized I didn't know how to preach. So of course they're like, there's a Muslim, they're like, mm, tell us, tell us about Jesus. I'm like, okay, okay, sit down. So I began, I began the story. It said, a long time ago, God loved the world. And they're like, what? I lost them. Right there, the first statement, I lost them. He said, what do you mean you loved? So because in my culture, gods don't love. Gods are hateful, they're mean, they, take, they kill your crops, they kill your kids, you need to give them chickens. So gods are not, God and love, uh-uh, the two don't work. So I tell them, just, just be quiet. You want to know why I'm happy? God loved the world. So they're like, eh. okay. So then I say, he loved the world, then he gave his son, his only son, to die. And they're like, oh, I lost them again. They're like, what sort of God is that? He must be weak. Because in my tribe, you don't give your only son. Your son is your future. So you don't give your son to die for strangers. So I told them, hey, you want to know why I'm happy? Be quiet. So I'm telling the story, but the more I tell the story, the more I'm thinking, uh-oh, the story's crazy. Because I'm telling the story, but the story doesn't make a lot of, it's not very convincing. So I say, okay, then he died, but then he rose again. They're like, ah, what do you mean he rose again? I'm like, yeah, 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 he rose again. Just get rose again. Then, then I said, um, and now he went up to be with his father, but he is here right now. Oh, I lose him again. What do you mean he's here? I thought you said he died. I said, I know I did. So the minute the more I'm telling the story, I'm thinking, this story is crazy. This Jesus story is crazy. It doesn't make sense. It's like ridiculous. You know, it's like crazy. But they're not leaving. They are listening to me. I'm telling the story. So they, they say, okay, and then what? And then what? And I'm thinking, you know what? 
I might as well just go for it. So I said, well, he loves you and he wants to come into your life right now and you should pray with me right now. And they're like, uh-uh. I said, do you want to know about Jesus? This is how you know about Jesus. So I told them, close your eyes, stay, pray this prayer. And I began to lead them. And they said, I said, tell them, say Jesus. And yeah, they didn't want to, didn't want to say, you gotta say this. So and I'm thinking, oh God, I'm in trouble. They're gonna kill me. They're gonna, because the story is not convincing. The story is like ridiculous. The story is silly story. The story doesn't make sense up here, especially to the African mind. But as I'm leading them in prayer, I open my eye, and one of them began to cry tears, and I'm like, oh. God, the story is powerful. The story is ridiculous. It's crazy, but it's powerful. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's powerful. They are maybe are they drawn in by the divine romance? Are they a God who loves a God you don't know who loves so much that He gave His Son for you? What is it? And they're like, they begin to, but of course they're African men. They're gonna be like, cool. So they're like, they, they don't want me to see them that they're crying. And they're like, mm -hmm. and I said, well, um, you now accept Jesus in your life and pray this prayer and they're praying come into my life right now Jesus come into my life Jesus come into my life yeah. and they're mm, mm, mm. they don't want me to see afterwards I tell them well you want to come to church with me and I said no yeah I'm like yes the story of Jesus It is not designed to make sense up here. But it's designed to touch the heart down here. Sorry. So. And I've kept talking about the story. And what I told my friends was true. I didn't die that year. I didn't die the following year. The wars stopped. And now I've been to 75 countries. Millions of lives I've heard. The story you just heard. And me and the boy who was born in Africa. The first five years, six years of my life, I even didn't have shoes. I was very poor. Sometimes I didn't know. I ate mangoes and guavas for lunch, guavas and mangoes for dinner. Run through a plantation and stole a banana for, you know, because that was what I had. But if Jesus can turn this life around, oh yeah, he can turn yours around too. He's amazing just like that. And I know this is Children's Day. But the story didn't quite stop there because we couldn't afford a full Bible. All we had was a little book of John. Look at the book of John. So we would read a book of John every day. Book of John, book of John, book of John. We'll read the book of John. Eventually we just got tired of reading. And I remember telling my boys, we're about seven of us, and said, we're tired of reading this. We've got to go do it. We need to heal the sick. Because Jesus says, Jesus heals the sick. And he says, we can do it too. So I remember thinking, okay, we need to go and heal the sick now. I remember having a problem, because we had to find a bunch of sick people. I said, where's sick? We're gonna find some sick people. And so we decided to go to the local hospital. The local hospital said, okay. Uh, so we went and said, hey guys, uh, we're here, we're Christians, and we've come to pray for the sick. And the doctor says, yeah. Yeah, priests come to pray for the sick, but um, not today, because today, we don't have anybody who's about to die. You want to come back in three days? Because that's when priests come. They pray to come to pray for those who are going to die. And we're like, no, 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 no. We don't want them to die. We want Jesus to make them live. And they said, what? Uh, they, we said, yeah, we're here to make them live. They pray. So they, they, the doctor just said, go. So like jokingly, go. So we went on the, to the first bed. 
we did not know, we didn't have Christian needs, we didn't know how to say the right things. So we just said, you get up now. And we just went to the next bed. You get up now. You get up now. Because Jesus says, you will heal the sick. You get up now. So we didn't, we didn't stop and check yourself. Are you feeling better? Are you, is, it, is, it, is the pain gone? No, you healed. You healed. You. We went through the whole ward. By the time we get here, there was crazy over there. Because they were all like pulling out IVs and whatnot. No, healed. Healed, healed, healed. There was chaos. The whole ward. Chaos. Everybody was here. So we were like, hey, hey, hey. but we didn't like make a big deal because it's supposed to work. Jesus said, you can heal the sick. So we don't need to be like, oh wow, that was amazing. We believed it literally. And we went home back to church. Pastor said, Pastor, we just went to the hospital and they closed the ward. The ward on the third floor is closed because everybody's healed. Because we brought them to church. They're here, they're here, they're here, you know. And we just believed God like a child. Believe God like a child. Everybody says simple faith. Come on, say simple faith. Come on, say simple faith. Say it again, simple faith. This is what Jesus says now. Um, Jesus says this. The disciples, Mark 10, 13. They were bringing him little children that they should touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. So Jesus is teaching. And the mamas say, Hey, you, hey, can you please go, go, go. Levi, go, go, go. Go, 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 Jesus. And then the disciples like, no, 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 sorry. They, they became bouncers, security. No, 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 don't, don't, don't bother him. Don't shut that thing. Stop, stop. That was it. Jesus, when Jesus saw it, he saw it. He was moved with indignation. He was displeased. Let me read that version. And he said to them, let the children come to me. Do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of of God. For like those is the kingdom of God. And here is another one. Yeah, Mark, Matthew 18 3. Verily, verily, Jesus said, I said, I'm just saying to you, except you are convert, converted. Everybody say converted. Can we say converted? Unless you are converted, converted and become as little children. You will by no means enter the kingdom. He doesn't say, uh, guys, it would kind of help you if you are like little children. He said, no, unless you become like these guys, you will by no means enter the kingdom of God. Now, what is the defining trait of a child? They believe without understanding. That's why we tell them, hey, if somebody says, mom is calling you, don't just go. Why? Because children just go. They believe without needing to figure it out. Jesus is saying, unless you are converted, hallelujah, you become, you are grown, you are mature, you know stuff. But unless you decide, you know, I am just going to believe, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. Come on, amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. As we travel, we're now active in over 23 countries. The places where God is totally moving. I'm talking about miracle signs, wonders. I'm talking about dead people. I've seen up to dead, eight dead people come back to life, like prayer. Jesus is God's power moving. Eyeballs. I'm going to tell this one, one story. I was in this. I had just begun, you know, because I joined the evangelism team and we're out on a crusade. Now I just got saved. I remember that one weekend, about 300 deaf and dumb and dumb kids had been brought to the meeting, and Jesus had opened all their eyes, oh, I mean, all their ears, all their, they were, he healed them all. In fact, they went back to their school, and they closed the school, because there was nobody who was sick anymore. Jesus had healed them. So at the end of that week, the last day, I am helping sit down, pull down the crusade. I'm just so happy Jesus has worked so many different things. And so I'm just so happy. 
And so this woman, he comes and it's late and she just pulls me, she said, you, I need prayer. I'm like, oh man, um, I'm not the preacher, number one. I'm just here just to, you know, and then number two, it's too late. Sorry, she says, no, it's not too late. I'm like, ooh, tough girl. She says, it's not too late. And she says, I've walked three hours to come here. I'm late because there was a flood or whatever. So I need prayer. I said, I, 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 I'll get you somebody. And then she says, no, you pray for me. <laughs> I'm like, um, okay, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not the prayer guy. I'm, I'm here. I've seen Jesus here. I'm good. I'm, I'm just helping out. She says, pray, pray. And I'm like, so I kind of look at her and I'm thinking, okay, um, you don't look really sick. You look okay. I guess maybe a little headache. Yeah, I can pray. So I said, oh, sure, I'll pray for you. Thinking it's a real quick miracle. Then she says, um, it's not for me. It's for my daughter. And then she pulls her daughter out. I'm like, mm, kids, I don't do kids. But then I'm thinking, uh, kid, kids are easy. I'll just pray a little quick prayer and that's it. Then I'm thinking, okay, I gotta be really sophisticated. So I said, um, what's, what's, what's her problem? What's the daughter's problem? And she says, she is blind. I'm like, no, that's a complicated case. Now, I, now I'm like, um, can I get you the pasta? Because I'm thinking that I, I can pray for a stomachache, maybe a headache, not blind. Blind is too big. So, she, she, but she's, she's standing there. She's like, are you going to pray? Are you going to start right now? And I'm like, mm, can I? She, she closes her eyes and she says, here. Pushes a little girl. She says, it's going to pray for you. And I'm like, oh, I am in so much trouble. I'm in so much trouble. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay, okay. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to pray real quick. Pray. Wait, but I need to put my hand where the baby is sick. So I'll put my hand on her eyes. So I put my hand on her eyeballs, on her eyes, to just pray. But then when I did that, she had no eyeballs. My, my fingers went straight, straight into her socket. I'm like, ah! now I want to run. Now I'm like, I'm like, oh, man. Hey, somebody help me, please. Hey. And, and she's like, she's, she, this woman is just looking at me. She said, are you going to start praying? I'm like, mm -hmm. so now all the while, at that point, it's like all my scriptures went, everything went, I didn't even remember how to pray, because I'm like freaking out, and so I said, okay, then one scripture, which was the theme of the crusade, Jesus Christ is the same, yes, today, today, and so that's, that's all I said, I said, and, and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Hebrews 13, and yeah, Jesus is the same. So I kept repeating that because I didn't know what else to pray. I didn't say, I didn't have, Lord, I thank you because you. I didn't have anything. It was, it was all gone. So, I said it three times. the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the little girl went, ah! And she fell to the floor and she started rolling. And I'm thinking, oh, I've killed her. I've made her worse. This is really bad. And so, so she, she just said, the, the woman, the little woman, the woman looks at me like, like, what did you do? What did you just do? And I'm like, I don't know. I just prayed, you know. So she goes down after her baby girl, and the baby girl is rolling around like in pain, holding her head. I'm like, who? Now I've caused another problem, you know? So, then she freezes. The mama freezes and the baby girl stops. And they're frozen. It seemed like forever. Then she gets up. The woman gets up and says, eh, 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 eh. So I know, that's a, that's a happy dance in Africa. So she's dancing. Eh, 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 eh. I'm like, oh, something good happened, you know? So then she, she gets up and she forces the baby girls like this and she forces her head toward me like that and she's like I'm thinking what's wrong what happened then I then she opens 
And she's like, they, they were new from heaven, never been used before. She's trying to use them. And I'm like, oh. Now I'm like, oh yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus moved, hallelujah. You know, and, uh, <laughs> now I've got all the confidence, you know. Then, then she says, she, then she looked at me, the mama, and she said, well, thank you, bye. And she walks away, I'm like, wee, wee. And she said, uh, she, she said, I have to go. Then she said, you know, I knew that was going to happen. And she walks away. I'm like, can you, can you, what, what do you mean? And as she's leaving, I go back to my friends, I tell them, the woman just got healed. And, and they're like all just tearing down, they're not caring. And for me, it, it stayed with me because she says, I knew that was going to happen. As she's walking for three hours, bringing her blind child to the crusade, she knew that was going to happen. I wasn't so anointed, so super anointed. It wasn't my anointing, my gifting. It was her faith. Her simple faith. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray. I said, we're going to pray. Yes. Come on, we're going to pray. Yes. We're going to pray. Yes. How many people here, you've got stuff? Either your body, your finances, you need help from Jesus. Come on, one, two, three, put it up. You see that? You see that? You see that? I'm just, I want you to put up so you can see that we all need something from Jesus, don't we? We all need something from Jesus. Just because you need something doesn't make you like, oh, poor, poor me, I can't pay my bills, poor me. No, 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 no. Look at Ron. One, two, three. Look around. Look around. Do you see? How many can put it down? How many, as I was talking, and I don't have, I haven't, I haven't spoken, I haven't jumped around a lot. How many know? How many feel as I was speaking? Faith was rising. How many? Faith that this is a, there's a God who can do amazing things. That just because I haven't seen him do it yet, oh man, he is amazing. Jesus, you guys believe in miracles, I know that. Yes. You see, you see God move, but sometimes when God's moving and he's moving there, he's moving there, you kind of tend to say, well, well, how come he's never been to my house yet? How come I haven't seen him yet? How come? Well, he's moving right now, tonight. His power is here right now, tonight. His glory is here right now, tonight. He is amazing. He is well able. Everybody say, He is able. Come and say that He is able. Come and say, He is able. Oh, hallelujah. Say it again. He is able. Hallelujah. Say it again. He is able. Say, 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 He's amazing. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So we're gonna do one we're gonna do two things before we pray. I wanna just pray for everybody. Just a prayer wherever you are. And release the power of God to move. If you're here today and you're saying, Well, I don't know Jesus like that. Maybe you know, maybe you're sitting there, maybe you come to church every day and maybe everybody thinks you're Christian. But if this building collapsed, God forbid, and we all died, and we were in Jesus before Jesus tonight, right now, if, this, if something happened and you were in the middle with Jesus, would you say, oh, awesome, Jesus, good to see you? Or would you say, uh, oops, because you were not ready? Well, you can be ready now. Amen? So, real quick, everybody's eyes are closed, head bowed. If you say, Jesus, Dennis, um, I, I really need this Jesus to come and 
I want to encounter Jesus. Jesus will change me completely. Will completely cause a shift in my life. I want him to come in and be real to me. Right now. If that's you, I'm going to count to three and put your hand up real high. One, two, three. If that's you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Here's what we're going to do, everybody. Put your hands down. Let's do this first first part. Just say, everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I give you my life. I give you my life. Jesus. Jesus. I give you my all. I give you my all. Jesus. Jesus. Be Lord of my life. Be Lord of my life. Take over completely. Take over. Wash my sins away. Come into my life. Again, be Lord of my life. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. He's amazing. I surrender. She decides to play the jump game. She's like, Daddy, I'm jumping. And I'm like, no. No, no. I am jumping. She warns me. No, no, no. So I'm thinking, surely she knows I'm too far away, number one. Number two, I can't get to her. And that would really hurt if I wasn't there. Surely she knows that. And, but she's now, now she begins to warn me. She says, one. And I'm thinking, no, she cannot surely have the velocity of the jump, the distance to her. Surely she can calculate that I can't. Two. I'm thinking, um, now I'm, I'm looking away now. She, she's going to take a hint that I'm not going to be there. Three. I'm like, I better check just in case. When I look, she's in mid-air. She's like, ah! She's jumping up like, ah! And my, I don't know, Superman, I don't know what I did. I got her. So I got her, and I'm now ready to say, Abby, why did you do that? You knew I was to. And she's like, ah! ah! I'm like, I want to. And then she's like, can we do it again? And I'm like, that's how we're supposed to be with our Heavenly Father. She doesn't need to figure it out. She knows every time I jump, Daddy catches me. I don't need to figure out how Daddy's going to catch me. Is he going to catch me today? Is he in the mood to catch me today? Is he able to catch me? No, 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 those things don't even, they don't matter to her. She knows every time I jump, Daddy catches me. So, I'm going to jump. Simple thing. Children. Today's Children's Day. Children. We can look at them and say, oh wow, kids. Or we can look like Jesus' eyes. 
Oh man, help me be like them. They don't need to wonder. He's going to pay my bills. He's going to. No. Every time I jump, daddy catches me. God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. So, are you ready to pray? If you're ready to do some work, I want you to stand up on your feet right now. Jesus. There's an old song we used to sing, Only Believe. You know that one? Only Believe. Or somebody else who's been diagnosed with something scary. You haven't even told your family, all of them, just a few. The power of God's here to heal. You will receive your miracle as well. Woo! Somebody else, you're losing your hair. You're losing your hair. It's scaring you because you're too young. You're afraid to go to have a check it out. Check it out because what if it's something big? What if it's something big and you've had some history? in your family of some things that are crazy like that so you're afraid and you feel with fear you can't even sleep at night power God's healing you God's moving through this place Ooh, the glory of God somebody else you're like this woman with the issue of blood you have a period it's it's not stopping it's not stopping it's not stopping you're losing weight you feel weak and sluggish during the day it's really scary. The power of God's here to heal you. In Jesus' name. Some bunch of people here, you've been, you're struggling with depression. Depression. It's cloudy during the whole. How many of those? One, two, three. Put your hand up. You're struggling with, you're fighting depression. One, two, three. Put your hand up. Don't, 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 be, don't be embarrassed. Power of God's here. Actually, you, you guys put your hand on your hand up like that. Put your depression. Anxiety and depression. Come on, one. Put your hand right this. I'm gonna rebuke that now in the name of Jesus. Free! Free in Jesus' name. Free! Be healed. Be set free. Be set free. Set free now in the name of Jesus. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Free! Free! Free in Jesus' name. The lady with the womb, with your, you and you here, your husband, the baby, actually there's more than one, but that, particularly one, five years, just put that, put your hand like that, power of God's touching you now. Roshi Badarabasta Bishi Pitsadini Alaba. Woo! Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things that are simple. been faithful you watch me work now hand of God's upon you somebody stand behind her here's what we're gonna do don't touch her if you would Over there, this lady over here, come right here. Somebody stand behind her. Power of God's gonna touch you. I love you, says the Lord. It's one thing you need so badly right now. So that you feel like invisible. Where's Jesus? Power of God's touching you. Free. Free, 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 free. 
all things are possible. Lord, I believe it. Brother over there, t-shirt, white t-shirt, you sir, come here. Yeah, you. Come stand right here. Put your hands up before the Lord. Just close your eyes. Kokashik the Baba. Father God touches you today. There it is. Now. Now. Free! Free! This tormenting thoughts. Your life's not worth living. I don't want to live anymore. I don't know how to live anymore. The foul spirit of death, you will obey. Leave now. Free! That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I believe. Oh, hold on one second. Come here, baby girl, over here. Yeah, right there. Sometimes you don't see the beautiful girl that you are. When you look in the mirror, it feels like, God, uh, where is she? You were younger. You used to have so much fun uh, with your toys, with your dolls, and now it's, it feels cloudy. The power of God sets you free. Now. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's here. Over there, all over. He's here. He's here. I'm about to, I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit here in a minute. Power of God's here. The glory of God is here. Amen. And you don't have to be cold out. I don't even need to see you. There's tumors dissolving in people's breasts two or three breast tumors some in fact somebody's scheduled for a month whatever mastectomy is that what it's called our god's here our god's here our god's here somebody here you have a child with, a, with down syndrome it's really been heavy just putting pressure on your family power god's healing jesus is healing jesus the healer he's moving around moving around He's amazing, he's amazing, he's amazing. I'm about to, I want, I want to quit here, just, just a few more minutes. It's, 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 the power of God's here, the power of God's here, the glory of God's here. He's healing, he's touching, he's setting free. Anxiety, go in Jesus' name. Insomnia, people who can't sleep at night. One, two, three. You can't sleep at night. Put your hand up. One, two, three. You can't sleep at night. Oh, there's too many. Oh, no. Put your hands down. Maybe you didn't. I'm, not, I'm hoping you didn't understand. If you're having problems sleeping at night, put your hand up. One, two, three. Go. Okay, there's too many, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay. That, you know what that means? It means a lot of stress. A lot of stress, a lot of chemical issues. Okay, you too. Put your hand on your head. If you can't sleep at night, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. In Jesus' name, I'm going to issue a command. Shukatala Bruba Shiba the Sabra Bashaka Baba. Oh, God's going to be touching her, touching her, touching her, touching her, touching her, touching her. Touching her. Okay, here we go. Free! You shall sleep sound. You shall sleep soundly. Kick is a part of it. You will sleep soundly. Kick is a part of it. You will sleep soundly in the name of Jesus. You will sleep soundly in Jesus' name. Amen. One more category you've been feeling, especially young people. I feel this strongly. You've been feeling like, I don't want to live. You don't want to kill yourself, but I just don't want to live. Life is too crazy, I, it's too painful, I hate living. You know, some of you don't even know Jesus, but you're feeling like, Jesus, take me. The spirit of death, causing clouds around your life. We're going to break that now, in the name of Jesus. If that's you, I don't want to live. I am done. I feel like, God, I'm, I'm really, 
I'm going to get down. If that's you, it's going to be maybe embarrassing to put your hand up. Maybe not. Because if you want it so bad, you're not going to care what they think. You know, right? Okay, are you ready? Put your hand up if that's you. I don't want to live. It's too hard. I don't want to live. I don't want to live. Okay. If you're sitting, if you're standing next to them, I want you to just try, go, go, go touch them now. Go touch them. We're going to rebuke a foul spirit of death. We're going to be, going to be set free now. I don't want to live. 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 In the name of Jesus. Somebody goes touch that lady over there in black. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Jesus' name, you foul spirits of death. The spirit of death. And somebody go touch that man over there. Somebody go lay a hand on that man over there. Yeah, just, just, just like that. That's good. That's good. I'm going to issue a command. You foul spirit of death. You will leave never to return ever again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go in the name of Jesus. Go now. Go now. Shopani se prabasa kabala baba. Freedom. Hallelujah. Freedom. to praise God right now. We're going to begin to praise God right now. Woo! Yes, yes. Let's, let's, let's do a happy song. Let's do a happy song. Hallelujah.
listening. That is about everything, guys. And you know what? Nothing can you know. But this time, with full of faith, we're full of strength, and conviction. One, two, three, three. Yeah.